Are you planning a trip to Istanbul? Then you have come to the right place. We're Jess and Miles, and after three years of traveling around the world, we are currently living here in Istanbul, Turkey. We love food, and trying new food is absolutely one of our favorite things about traveling to a new country. Today we're gonna to show you just how affordable the food really is here in Istanbul. It's actually amazing the value and quality you get traveling here in Istanbul. We recently made a video and told you about 10 must try foods while you're here, but today we're actually gonna get out and show you. We have $20 here for the both of us and we're gonna see just how many different things we can eat today. Our goal is 10 different things. Let's see if we can make it happen. First things first, 20 US dollars is 372 Turkish lira, so that is all we're gonna bring with us today. Real quick, if you're starting to plan your trip to Istanbul, you probably already know the city can be overwhelming. There's so much to do, so much information out there, and with a short amount of time here, there are so many opportunities to get it wrong. Let us help you. We always have a more rewarding experience in a new place when we know someone who lives there and can help us travel more like a local. We want to be that for you here in Istanbul. We have created a comprehensive digital guide because we want to give you that local experience and share with you the city we have fallen in love with. It's less than $10, and if it isn't exactly what you need, we will give you all your money back. If you're interested, just go to the link in the description or the pinned comments to learn more about it. So we've mentioned in other videos, we live in Katakoy on the Asian side. So all the places we're gonna be trying today are around our neighborhood in Katakoy. The food here is absolutely amazing. And we have found that the prices of things here on the Asian side tend to be a little less than on the European side, but nothing that we're trying today is specific to Katakoy. You should be able to find everything we're gonna to eat today, basically anywhere in the city. We've come down by the ferry terminals and it's first thing in the morning, so we're gonna start out with something quick and easy that's usually eaten as a snack or for breakfast, and that is simit. This is a type of Turkish bread baked in the shape of a circle. It's kind of similar to a bagel. It's covered in sesame seeds. It's only five Turkish lira for one, so it's super affordable, and you will find these stands all over Istanbul. Seriously, they're everywhere. So if you need a quick pick-me-up or something on the go, this is the perfect thing. We just got one because we have a lot to eat today, but <laughs> usually we get two if we are actually trying to. There's no sense in sharing a simit. <laughs> Merhaba. Merhaba. Good night. Good night. <laughs> also, we bought this and he gave us these two things as well, so... <laughs> He's so cute, he wanted to take a picture with us and he gave us these two little rolls. Uh-oh. It didn't bear this very evenly. Here. <laughs> Don't walk around Istanbul hangry. Just stop at a cement stand. And they have several spreads you can get too, like Nutella or some kind of cream cheese. We're just getting the bread because we're on a budget today. <laughs> it's really cool to be in a city that's surrounded by the sea where you can just come down and enjoy a simit by the water. Admittedly, the ones from the bakeries are a little bit better. This is made to last a little longer in the stand, I guess. <laughs> Up next, we're gonna have something much more filling. Oh, it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> I think we have three breakfasts planned today. Next up, we have Borek. This is honestly a pretty bold choice for our second stop because usually when we eat Borek, we are not hungry for hours afterwards. It is absolutely delicious, but very heavy and very filling. This is one portion. <laughs> so you can get various different ingredients inside. We went with potato, but you can also do meat, spinach, or just cheese. It's all delicious. It has really crispy, thin layers of phyllo dough. So good. This is heavy. Last bite. The problem with these food videos is that Jess has self-control and she stops eating. But then I look at the rest of the plate and feel like it's my responsibility to finish it. I don't know if it's because I have two brothers or what, but no Borak left behind. <laughs> good work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing left. So our next food stop is another savory pastry, so we're gonna break it up in between and get some Turkish coffee. Merhaba. That's our olive guy. <laughs> Bonus tip, those apricots are the good sun-dried apricots. These, not sun-dried. They look pretty, but don't be fooled. Tell me all about Turkish coffee since you have been making it at home for us recently. Oh, I've been trying. It's been one of those things that I'm trying to learn while we're here. 
I haven't quite gotten it right. Turkish coffee is made using a special brewing technique where they take very finely ground coffee and place it into a special brewer called a jezve, where it's brought nearly to a boil when you can see that nice foam start to develop on top. And then it is poured, grounds and all, into one of these adorable little cups. And you want to make sure that you stop drinking it before you get to the bottom or you'll end up eating your coffee. Yeah, I haven't quite been able to get it to taste this good. I guess you could say it has a bit of a bitter taste. Honestly, we're pretty used to it at this point because we drink it all the time. But if you do want it with sugar, they actually brew the coffee with the sugar already in it. You cannot add sugar after the fact because like Miles mentioned, the grounds are in here. So if you add sugar and stir it all around, then you're gonna be stirring all the grounds around and it's really gritty and it's just not a good situation. So sugar goes in while being brewed and we usually get ours with a little sugar, otherwise it is very, very sweet. <laughs> and it's usually served with a Turkish delight and a water. I always take it one sip too far. At this point, I should stop drinking it. You can see the grounds at the bottom. <laughs> it's on your lip. It's so thick. <laughs> so far, we have had Simit for five Turkish lira, Boric for 30, and then two Turkish coffees were 56. So that is 91 Turkish lira total. This next stop, might just be my most favorite thing that we eat in Istanbul. I'm pretty sure Jess is gonna find a way to put this place in every video we make. <laughs> we did talk about this in the last food video that we made, but now we're gonna show you. Here it is, Guzleme. So the first time we got this, we got mushrooms, potato, corn, and cheese. And honestly, it was so good. <laughs> We've literally ordered it that exact same way every time since. We, no joke, eat guzleme at least once a week and always at the same place. And when we first came to Istanbul, we almost rented an apartment that is directly above this place. <laughs> I think I would be 300 pounds. But at this place that we come to, the ladies sit right here making the guzleme and you can literally just watch them making guzleme after guzleme. It really is a craft. It gets rolled out so thin, stuffed with all the ingredients, and then cooked on top of the griddle, and it is so delicious. Look at that. So good. Looks like they're hiring. Do you think you could make them? I love how they roll it up onto their rolling pin to put it onto the griddle. They literally know the exact amount of dough that is needed. They know how it needs to feel in their hand for the exact perfect size. So the first time we came here, we got this yogurt on the side and then Jess takes all of these red pepper flakes <laughs> and then just dumps them into the yogurt. The first time the guy who works here saw her do that, he was like, uh, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you make it so spicy? <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Next on the list is stuffed mussels. This is a really popular street food that you can find all over the city. The mussels are steamed and then stuffed with rice and put back in the shell so you can use the top of the shell as a spoon. Are they good? We're getting too regular and too spicy. That was just a regular classic one. I'm looking forward to the spicy ones. Spicy. Mm. This is spicy. So you'll find guys selling these all around the streets just with, you know, some trays. But we tend to stick to a, more of a restaurant type location. <laughs> we just feel a bit better about that. That's a big one. Every day we go for a walk along the waterfront here in Katakyoi. And yesterday we saw guys pulling whole bags of mussels right out of the sea, which on one hand you'd think, oh wow, those must be really fresh mussels. And on the other hand, when you do that walk every day and you know that the sanitation plant is just 100 meters down <laughs> the way, it makes you second guess whether or not you should eat mussels on the side of the street. <laughs> Make it up. Five piece, one piece, five tera. Five piece, uh, 25. Wow. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that was stop number five, which means we're halfway there and we still have 210 Turkish lira left. So we're doing pretty good. And it's time for something sweet. Not just something sweet. The only sweet thing that matters. <laughs> she says that now, but we'll probably do a whole dessert video because there's more than one sweet thing that matters here in Turkey. <laughs> okay, there's 
there are more, but you know, one that matters most. There is an undisputed number one. <laughs> yes. What is that undisputed number one? I think that anybody can guess. It's baklava. Baklava might just be in the top three reasons of why we moved to Turkey. <laughs> And I'm only kidding a little bit. <laughs> when we first got here, we no joke were eating baklava every single day. And um, yeah, we dialed it back a bit and now we eat it about three or four times a week. <laughs> but we have since graduated to the pie slice baklava, which um, just helps us feel better about the fact that we're eating about three pieces in one sitting. I don't really think baklava needs any further explanation but you have paper thin layers of phyllo dough with pistachios, more phyllo dough, then after it's baked, syrup gets poured over the baklava. It's perfection. Well, we've learned that not all baklava is created equally. Last year we went to Gaziantep, that pretty much ruined us. So we typically go to places that have Gaziantep in the name. Gaziantep. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> we normally get two pieces, but like we said, we're on a budget today. So we're going to split this one, which is not the best idea to try and split a pie slice of baklava between the two of us. You can hear the crunch. Can you hear the crunch? You must be able to hear the <gasps> And look at this syrup. It's just dripping out the sides. Oh my gosh. It's warm. We've been sitting here talking about this baklava. The owner of the shop's trying to tell us that it's hot and hurry up and eat it. <laughs> There's a special place in my heart for warm baklava. Mm. Mm. We gotta get another piece. Screw the budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's so syrupy. Oh my gosh. You can hear the crunch with every bite. <laughs> I just ordered another one. Mm. We've only ever had warm baklava one other time in Gaziantep. And it's a game changer, seriously. Thank you. <laughs> I think you can hear the crunch of that over the traffic. It was amazing. Oh my God. So good. You can see the individual layers in there. It is so syrupy. How do we find out when he has warm box? I know. It's 1.38 right now. So I guess every single day we'll go to 1.38. We'll come by. This is only like two blocks from our place. Dangerous. Well, we just blew the budget a bit on baklava. I think that was... 60 Turkish lira for the two pieces. But, like we said, the pie slice ones are probably the equivalent of at least two and a half pieces of the normal square-shaped ones. So, it's a lot of baklava. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it, though. <laughs> What's next on the list? Oh, okay. I think we're gonna take another break from food. And we're gonna get some chai. Ooh. Yeah, I gotta... Let that settle then. Yeah, you gotta wash down all that sugar. Well, the funny thing is, oh, actually, I was gonna talk to you about this when we have chai. He would have just given us chai for free. <laughs> but we wanted to make it a dedicated stop. <laughs> so you hear a lot about Turkish coffee, but chai is by far the most popular drink here in Turkey. We've actually already been offered it twice today. And depending on where you go, particularly at the more local restaurants, they'll often just bring it to you for free at the end of your meal. Even if not, it's usually around 10 Turkish Lira, so it's super affordable. And, oh. and it comes in these adorable little tulip-shaped glasses. Last year when we were on a road trip out in the highlands where they grow a lot of the tea, there's a town called Rize that has a huge building that's in the shape of these tulip-shaped glasses. Stop number eight. So this is actually another place that we come to multiple times a week. We usually get pide here, but what we're showing you today is lakmajun. Lakmajun is quick, delicious, and super cheap. <laughs> so lakmajun is a crispy flatbread with minced meat, and it's served with lettuce, tomato, onion, and then roll it up. Oh man, that's good. Mm. That is good. 
full? Hmm? Are you getting full? Oh yeah, I'm so full. The only thing today that Jess has eaten her even half of was the baklava. I'm not mad about it. To be clear. I had my whole British coffee and chai. Those are drinks. <laughs> bigger than you. <laughs> so we're on stop number nine and this is another quick, easy, and very cheap meal here in Istanbul. That is donor. You can get beef, lamb, or chicken. We usually get chicken. Typically we get two, but we're just going to share one today. Can't go wrong with donor. You'll see these shops all over Istanbul. I like to add a spicy pepper to every bite. <laughs> Sometimes we get these to go, but always just reminds me to make sure I get about this size to go container of peppers to make sure she has at least one for every bite. It may seem like an obvious one, but I can almost guarantee you will eat donor while you're here in Istanbul. There are literally donor shops everywhere. Simple, but delicious. Pretty hard to beat. Thinly sliced meat, french fries. Pickles and peppers. We should mention that you can get different sizes of these, 100 grams, 150 grams, 200 grams. We order the 100 gram donor, and it's more than enough. I'm just looking at myself. See if I have any sauce on my face. So we just did some math, and we still have 86 Turkish lira left. Our goal today was 10 stops. That was just stop number nine. So we're doing great on the budget. We're doing great on the budget, but not so great with room left in my stomach. But we're powering through. To be honest, I knew it was gonna be pretty tough to spend $20 going around eating today, but I didn't appreciate how hard it was gonna to be to actually eat all of this food in one day. To be clear, there are plenty of more expensive meals you can have here in Istanbul, but when you're intentional about it, you can eat very, very affordably here. I'm not gonna be hungry again until the middle of the week. Looks like Hey Arnold's head. <laughs> it totally does. From what I understand, each Kyofta is usually served as a hot meze, like an appetizer. A lot of people call it a street food. I have yet to see it sold as a street food anywhere in Istanbul, but it's relatively inexpensive, pretty unique, so we thought we would showcase it here as number 10. So what we have here is a football-shaped fried meatball. There's ground meat with onions and spices. It's hot. It's good. The bulgur wheat almost makes it have like the texture of cornbread on the outside. Oily fried pocket of ground meat. It's exactly what I needed for stop number 10. Okay, we have 61 Turkish lira left and we can't end on a single meatball. So we're headed back into the market <laughs> in search of something fun. It is kind of crazy to me that the one meatball was 25 and the whole foot and a half long Tavuk donor is also 25. What do you have in your hand? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> is that your half of the meatball? <laughs> I'm gonna give it to a dog. <laughs> I'm gonna save my space. <laughs> We're having a dilemma. We have 61 Turkish lira left. We could get kunefe and ice cream for 60. Or we could get boza, which is kind of a winter drink, for a good bit less than that, for 36. And then that would leave us with more money. Mm. What do you think? Should we rock, paper, scissors for it? You be boza, I'll be kunefe. Okay. I win! You win? What was I? Kunefe. <laughs> <laughs> Boza oh, I, it is. I, well, you won. I know, but we've never had Boza. We get Kunefe all the time. But then what are we going to get with the rest of the money? Who cares? <laughs> okay, we don't know a lot about this drink, but it says it's a fermented wheat refreshment. It's served with cinnamon and roasted chickpeas on top. I literally have no idea what to expect from the taste of this. I can smell the chickpeas. It's so thick. Oh! Hmm! I don't know what to compare it to. Uh-oh. I kind of like that. I do 
nothing will be finishing this. Is it sweet? Is it what? Like, give us some descriptors. On a sweet scale of one to ten, it's maybe a three. Kind of sour, a little bit tart. Well, the flavor does have kind of a wheat flavor to it. This is honestly not easy to describe, other than that it is the perfect winter drink. It's thick, creamy. It's not hot, but it definitely fills you. And that cinnamon flavor just screams holidays. So we're heading back to our place because we're done. But the sign said that it helped with digestion, which is pretty much the perfect way to end our day here. So we're going back to our place. We do have 25 Turkish lira left, but we're gonna save that for later if we happen to get hungry. We're not gonna get hungry. That was a full day of eating for 19, less than $19. Yep, just under $19. I'd call that a success. Me too. All right. Five Turkish lira to spare. Blah, 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 blah. Helps digestion.